Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at Ella Damri, the new 3 mana 3-3 three, three commander that says we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells from the top of our library, not limited to a single creature type, so that's great. And then we can also pay a green, tap Ella Damri and two untapped creatures we control to reveal a card from our hand or the top of our library, and if it's a creature card we can put it straight onto the battlefield. So Ella Damri is an awesome commander, wants to be played alongside a lot of creatures Creatures, not only cheap creatures to enable the second ability and to easily cast them off the top, but then also some expensive creatures so we can make it worthwhile to cheat them into play. And then I'm mostly focusing on creatures that have powerful enter the battlefield abilities as opposed to cast triggers. So you're not going to see any Eldrassi in this deck, for instance, since we would miss out on the cast triggers if we put them in play with Aladamri's ability. And then some of these creatures at 6 and 7 mana are still more realistic to hard cast in case our commander gets taken out, since we do still have lots of other ways to accelerate our mana. As we'll see here, I've split up the deck into a few different categories, and the two main ones are, on the one hand, we've got mana acceleration, mostly just creatures that tap for mana, which can then also enable Eladamri's ability, and then at the other category are the payoff cards, lots of curve toppers we can try to cheat and play with Eladamri, or simply a ramp into and then in between here we also have some miscellaneous cards, mostly ways to blow up artifacts and enchantments. And then we've got some additional card draw engines, also ways to play lands off the top of the deck, since if we get stuck with a land pocket then Eladamri cannot cast creatures off the top or cheat them into play. So then it's nice to get past those by playing the lands off the top, and then Eladamri can do its thing once again. So that's kind of the deck in a nutshell. Starting now with a deep dive, looking at our mana acceleration. Cards like Arboreal Grazer and Kami are excellent since they put an extra lane in play and they don't need to tap to make mana, so we can still tap them with Aldamri's ability. But it's still great to have some actual mana creatures like the Halfling, even making our legendaries uncounterable. We've got Elvish Mystic, Helenor Elves, and then Gilded Goose is still great since it can cast Turn to Aldamri, and then even though it doesn't make mana, it can still tap for the ability. And then we've got Utopia Sprawl as one of the only non-creature ramp cards in the deck, just because it comes down so early and we've got plenty of forest to enchant. And then at 2 mana there's Loam Speaker. Elves also go up in value slightly since we have some elf synergies throughout. Fanatic of Veronas is an awesome addition for green ramp decks, kind of like an upgraded version of the Karyotid. Now making a 4 mana if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, as opposed to just 2. But we're still running the Karyotid since it's good enough. And then the Fanatic also has Eternalize, so it can come back from the graveyard as a 4-4. So then it will satisfy its own condition. Then the Leafkin can also maybe make 2 mana. Lotus Cobra makes mana with Landfall, so it doesn't need to tap, meaning we can still tap it with Aladamri's ability. Priest of Titania is awesome too, since we have an elf sub-theme. Also keeps track of opposing elves, so will especially shine in the green mirror matches. Then there's Emerald Medallion discounting our green spells by 1. Lenor Visionary makes a mana and draws a card. We've got a Nissa, which is similar to Lotus Cobra, but can also maybe find additional elves or elementals if we enable Landfall twice. Provisioner makes a treasure token, so with a landfall. There's the Archdruid, which is similar to Priest of Titania at 3 mana, and then also pumps up our elves. Silvala can also be great if we start cheating expensive creatures onto the battlefield, as they now draw an extra card as well. Then there's Circle of Dreams, which keeps track of any creature, not only elves, to make additional mana. Lenor Tribe taps for a triple green. And then there's Ashaya, turning all our creatures into lands, essentially, so great with a landfall as well, and can also generate additional mana for us. And then Anissa, who shakes the world, one of our few non-creature spells, but still nice here, as it essentially doubles up our mana. And then our miscellaneous section includes answers to artifacts and enchantments with Haywire Might, Reclamation Sage, and Force of Vigor, which we can cast for free by pitching a green spell from our hand. Then we've got the Shepherd making green spells uncounterable, can pump up our elves as well. Smuggler Surprise, kind of like a cheaper tooth and nail, just putting creatures from our hand onto the battlefield, but can maybe mill some additional creatures as well. We've got Sylvan Safekeeper to keep our more important creatures safe by sacrificing lanes, and also still just a cheap creature to enable Eladamri. And then the Symbiote's nice with some of our elves that tap for more than one mana, as we can return a creature to untap them to keep making more mana. And then uh, we've got some more card draw here with Elvish Visionary. Fauna Shaman can tutor up some creature by discarding one, so it can find our curve toppers if we need them. Fierce Empath will enter, searching up a creature with mana value 6 or greater. Then there's Augur of Autumn to play lands of the top, eventually creatures as well. Of course of Krufix playing lands and gaining a life in the process. And Oracle can play lands as well as play an extra land each turn. 
And then there's Beast Whisper, just drawing a card whenever we cast a creature spell. And the Great Hench whenever a creature enters. So we'll also trigger off Aladamri's ability, cheating a creature into play. And now we get to the exciting part, the Curve Toppers, starting with Silverback Elder, a repeatable way of dealing with artifacts and enchantments, gaining life or ramping. Soul of the Harvest, another card draw engine at 6 mana. We've got Disciple, which can be played as a land or a way to maybe sacrifice a creature and draw a bunch of cards. We've got Kogla, which fights when it enters and destroys artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. We've got Old Nobun, helping us make a bunch of treasure. Thorn Mammoth, repeatedly fighting opposing creatures. Got Voltborn Tyrant drawing cards and gaining a life. Hunger Dominus can double power and toughness each turn. We've got Hornet Queen making a bunch of flying and death touching insects. Nyx Bloom Ancient tripling our mana. We've got Palaka Worm gaining a life and drawing cards when it dies. Titan of Industry can also deal with artifacts and enchantments or maybe protect one of our key creatures alongside making a 4 4 Rhino. Tyranax Rex can maybe poison the opponent to death. We've got a Voring Clax which also doubles our mana and keeps opposing lands tapped down for a turn. Crater Hoof Behemoth, one of the better finishers once we have an established board. And Raise Foreigners, kind of like a smaller version of Crater Hoof. Galta Stampede Tyrant may seem like overkill, but sometimes you do accumulate some expensive cards in hand, and then we only need to activate Aladamri once to get them all onto the battlefield. And then a Sundering Titan, a nice way to punish greedy mana bases, especially good if the opponent also has a forest we can destroy. The Great Worm may not be all that great since it doesn't have Trample, but still a 16-16 with Indestructible. World Spine Worm 15-15 with Trample and leaves behind Worm Tokens when it dies. And then finally Galta Primal Hunger we can often cast on the cheap as well. And then our mana base is 29 basic forest, plenty of green fetch lands still since they can enable a landfall twice. Some of these can also fetch up our gate to Manorborn as a non-basic forest. And then we've got Cavern to make some of our elves uncounterable. Castle Garenbrake can give us an extra mana, and Nykthos can also give us a mana boost if we have lots of green devotion going. And then Boseju, another answer to artifacts or enchantments or maybe non-basic lands. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw facing uh, Zusa, and uh, we're missing some early mana acceleration, so this hand feels a little too clunky. And this one also doesn't have any ramp. Safekeeper also doesn't seem super important in this matchup. So let's go to six. This is probably our best hand so far. Still no one or two mana acceleration, but at three mana, Archdruid could be quite powerful. So maybe the Provisioner goes, keep Great Worm as something to cheat into play, and then a Great Henge to try and take over. But the Azusa deck can be incredibly explosive, especially if they can combine fetch lands with ways to replay lands out of the graveyard. That's usually how they can quickly pull ahead. Winding Way finds two lands. Oracle of Moldaya could be fun. If we have land stuck on top, we can still play them to maybe find more creatures. And a Druid class, so opponent's down to two unknowns in hand, although Druid class can also eventually make a large threat. And we found a Lenor tribe, might be better than Eladamri right now. And then Archdruid, since we may not have enough elves in play, but next turn we can do some things. Just gotta hope our opponent has a lot of mana, but nothing to spend that mana on. That can sometimes be an issue with Azusa decks. So one unknown left in hand. If it's some giant Eldrazi, we could be in trouble. Okay, so this turn I probably want to play Eladamri and... Maybe even Oracle, I guess we could wait on Aladamri, but then I don't get to use the ability next turn. Could also just be Aladamri plus Archdruids, to be fair. I guess we'll start here, see what's on top. Alright, that's probably fine then, Circle of Dreams. And then next turn, we should be able to empty most of our hand. So just gotta cross our fingers that there's no huge creature coming in. Opponent fetching the gate, and now Endurance, that's fine. So just a 3-4 with reach. The gate can maybe find more action. And then we have to watch out for desert as well. So they want to attack with one toughness creatures. And there's a crucible. So now they get to start replaying all those fetch lands. And uh, not only thin out the deck, 
but also now gain life with Druid class. So yeah, opponent's doing a lot of things. Although at the moment, it seems like the board is still manageable. I guess they can still activate the Druid class, and then I'll have to take a pretty big hit. Our opponent just passing. And old Gnawbone on top, we can put it in play with Eladamri if we'd like. Which seems like a fine starting point. Although that does mean having to tap my two other creatures, which at this point generate a lot of mana as well. So, what's the best sequence we have available? Maybe it's Oracle into Archdruid tapping Circle of Dreams, and then tap the two summoning say creatures with Eladamri. I think that's fine. So tap Lanor for three. Then tap Circle of Dreams. And then activates Eladamri. Tapping these two. Putting in Old Gnawbone. Can still play Lands over the top with Oracle. Play Grazer. Although now I probably want to play Great Henge first. So we can start drawing. Put in a forest. And we'll have to wait for Vorinclex. Alright, not a bad turn. Still have some nice curve toppers in hand. Although now Court of Calling for three. Is this going to be a Skewed Swarm? Maybe a Tireless Tracker? And it's going to be Skewed Swarm. So yeah, opponent's going to essentially gum up the ground with almost infinite 1-1s. One and uh, I guess we've got a Gnawbone can be trumped by Endurance. So, yeah, we may be dead here. Not this turn, but next turn. As our opponent can keep getting back fetch lanes over and over. Are there more flying creatures we can count on? Maybe. That's where not having Trample is a pretty big drawback on the Great Worm. Our opponent's got 26 tokens already, and it's only going to keep going up. So yeah, we got to do our thing, but our opponent eventually found a tutor for Skewed Swarm. And in the mono green mirror, where there's no sweepers, Skewed Swarm's pretty good. So, opponent at 46, thanks to all the life gain from Druid class. I don't think we have a way of dealing that much damage next turn, unless we maybe reveal a Crater Hoof. Even then, we may not have enough. Also gonna have to trump with our Boreal Grazer here on the 16-16. Or I guess at this point I can take it. Since it's not like... Uh, it's gonna make that much of a difference. So start by playing Land of the Top. Loam Speaker. We can play. Just digging for something like a Crater Hoof. Fauna Shaman I sadly won't be able to activate, but it's still a redraw, I guess. Could also play Vorinclex first, just to give me more mana, which could be a limiting factor. At this point, maybe just tapping Archroot is better, so I have more attackers in case of a Crater Hoof, as opposed to activating Eladamri. So, let's see here. Yeah, let's just tap the Archdruid. Play Vorinclex. And then Disciple could sacrifice a creature to draw a bunch. I guess that's not bad. So let's make some mana first. Cast the Disciple, sacking Vorinclex is an option. Or I could play a Forest first, just to make a little bit more mana. Titan of Industry coming up can blow up a Druid class or a Crucible. Don't think that makes a huge difference. Alright, we found a Galta. That's kind of exciting. Although still no Crater Hoof or other trampley effect. So maybe want to shuffle with Windswept Heath. 
another forest on top. So yeah, I guess we'll just uh, play Galta here. Put in all our creatures, which will draw more with the Great Henge. Although, still probably won't be enough. Unless we find a Crater Hoof. So I'll make a token, destroy. At least we're having fun. Well, there's Crater Hoof. So, I think it's time to cast it. Could also activate a Ladamri, but then I have fewer attackers. So maybe let's just play more creatures first. Gilded Goose. Just want to increase my creature count. Can play Kogla to clear a blocker. And then activate Aladamri, tapping some of my creatures here that have summoning sickness. Put in Crater Hoof. Turn my team sideways and see what happens, I guess. Probably could have responded to the Kogla fight and then take out the 1616 land instead, since Crater Hoof would uh, make it so Kogla is large enough to win the fight. At the very least, our opponent will lose some tokens, so maybe they won't have a lethal on the way back. Alright, never mind, our opponent just took it, so maybe they did the math and figured out they were dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Hanadu, and uh, our hand seems reasonable. Although on the draw, without a one-man accelerant, we might be a little slow. But does have the Utopia Sprawl. So, keep the fetch land for Nyssa. Turn 2 we can either Medallion or Leafkin. Opponent with turn 2, Nadu. Alright, Kami shows up. Does that change my sequencing? I don't think so. Just go for Leafkin. And then next turn could go Nyssa, fetch land, and take it from there. Opponent's got the boots, so they've got their one mana equip for Nadu. So they get to start comboing, finding a bounce spell for Leafkin. And the halfling. Alright. What's next? Can uh, play Medallion into Leafkin, although that kind of wastes the fetch, unless we want to play the Garden of Freilies, which might be necessary. And then next turn we can keep double spelling. The opponent's already doing Nadu things very early in the game. And they've got removal as well. Provisioner, quite powerful if they have the mana to deploy it, but looks like they don't. And our opponent keeps up some mana. Alright, well, step one's gotta be Nissa. Play the fetch land. Can now play Aladomri. Opponent opts in response. And then forest on top we can shuffle away to enable Nissa, maybe find a useful elf. Crater Hoof on top. And Priest of Titania counts, so we can play that. And uh, Visionary of the top. Okay, not bad. Medallion enabling some fun plays. Sadly, we did end up uh, getting rid of the Crater Hoof. But now our opponent gets to kind of go off with a Provisioner, making lots of treasure. Might be able to survive this turn, but we may not get a next turn. 
brute skill can also combo off if they can put plus one counters on it. Or they may just adapt. Alright, just an attack for five. So they might have counter spell at the ready. Symbiotes, that's a nice one with Priest of Titania. So let's start there. Forerunner could be a finisher. So certainly have options. Let's say we start by casting Galta. Could also put in the Voltborn, but we may want to attack with some of our creatures. Although if I get enough life with Voltborn, I guess we're fine as well. Maybe actually uh, play the Loam Speaker first. Then activates Aladamri. Putting in Voltborn, that way they can't counter it. And gain some life. Then it's probably time for Priest of Titania. Could play Galta or we could spree Smuggler Surprise and maybe have that countered. And then we still have Symbiote to pick up Visionary and um, untap Priest of Titania. So we'll try this. That works. Put our creatures in hand and then maybe actually want to fetch lands as uh, we can still use Kami. Put these two in play. Draw some more cards. Play Corsair, then use Symbiote to untap Priest of Titania, picking up Elvish Visionary. So that can tap for five, put in Kami, which can put in the fetch lanes, which will then also enable Nissa to find another elf. Fierce Empath. Lanor Tribe on top. Cannot quite play Kogla and pay the ward, but that's okay. Maybe just taking out the Provisioner is enough. Yeah, that might be good enough for now. We're at 18, so not an immediate danger of dying. And then we still get to attack with a few creatures. Alright, decent turn. But we'll see what Nadu can come up with. Opponent adapts. Don't have any flying blockers. And our opponent's gonna start triggering Nadu a bunch. If they can take an extra turn, if they can bounce all my stuff, those are the types of cards we don't want to see. But at least they're not generating treasure with every land drop. So this turn's gonna take a while. And Gift of the Viper, giving Death Touch. Bone found Scute Swarm to start going wide, and now a Chroma's Memorial to give their creatures flying. Luckily not enough for lethal, and our opponent's tapped out. So we should have it here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Taisa, a very powerful spirit deck. And uh, we've got Halfling, that's nice. Probably will lose Eladamri to removal. And then we still need another cheap creature to activate the ability. Or we might try and set up a Smuggler Surprise to cheat our creatures into play. For now, play Halfling. Opponent might have a Path to Exile or Source to Plowshares here. Doesn't cast it, so more likely to be Path. Which is not great when played on an Elf. Opponent makes two Spirits already. 
and uh, we'll play Ella Damri since we don't have much else going on. Keep the Vista to maybe go with a landfall creature later. Galta coming up, so yeah, if they answer Ella Damri, we don't have much going on next turn. And Humiliation removes the ability, so that's even more annoying than just destroying my creature. So yeah, now it's just a 3-3. Can use Smuggler Surprise to mill a few cards, but I think the goal is 6 mana to cheat 2 creatures into play. But that means we're not doing anything in the foreseeable future. So it goes. We'll just have to be patient. Puns also stuck on two, maybe kept their hand based on humiliation. Now a shepherd doesn't kill anything, just pumping a spirit. Take four. Well, at least we'll get there next turn if Halfling survives. And Eldamari can attack. Well, strange game so far. Hoping Halfling can survive another turn. And then which creatures do we want to put in place, a question. Hornet Queen looks good against all the spirits. Sundering Titan can destroy their lands. So I think I've found my selection. And we have to main phase it because of the Abolisher. Yeah, I think that's the pick. I will have to blow up one of my own forests as well, but that's a price I'm willing to pay. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and you'll never guess what we're up against. Turn 1 Lenor Elves sets up turn 2 Eladamri, so that's promising. And then turn 3 maybe a Leafkin activate Eladamri, putting in Galta, which puts in Tyranax and Sundering Titan. A man can dream. But a counter spell or some removal for Eladamri could slow us down. Alright, so two mana available. I don't have to play Eladamri, but it would be the most fun if it resolves. And then next turn, either way, I get to double two drop, so I think it makes sense to still try. They might be sitting on a gross peril, for all we know. Yep. So the plan next turn, play Leafkin, and then activate Aladamri, tapping two untapped creatures. And then this Galta's looking quite appealing. Fine if they tap out for Nadu and do some Nadu things. You got it. Equip the Bone Saw, and then hopefully they don't hit an untapped land. Potent keeps up a mana. Not sure what for, but uh, yeah, I guess we can cast Fauna Shaman of the top now and still activate Aladamri. Maybe they have a protection spell for Nadu, but uh, we're not gonna touch it. Alright, put in our Stampede Tyrant. On turn three. And we've got a follow-up. Sundering Titan, blow up a Breeding Pool and Forest, so I don't need to blow up my own land. I guess we can even go Breeding Pool plus Hedge Maze. That'll set them back. And hit you for eight. I would call that a success. They maybe should have uh, floated their mana and still targeted Nadu if they had a pump spell, just to try and get a trigger. Alright, Poon's gonna fight a good fight. Equip Bonesaw, revealing mana drain. But yeah, as it turns out, once Eldamri is on the battlefield, you can get around counter spells pretty easily. A Lava Spur Boots. But on the board, our opponent seems pretty dead. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Jin Kitaxius. So blue artifact ramp, maybe with some control elements. Our hand has potential. Kami put in a land. Could already play turn two Heladamri before they can try and counter it. And then a Corsair 
can help play lands off the top so we find more creatures for the ability. Alright, so I'm hoping they don't have a wash away. Wash away is a reason to play Corsair, but the problem is on two mana they'll have a bunch more counter spells available. Alright, that resolved. And Fauna Shaman coming up could also be fun. And Guardian Idol is acceptable. And land on top. So we could go Medallion, play Fauna Shaman, and then activate Eladamri to put in Corsair, or I can just play Corsair, uh, play Land of the Top, and not play Medallion, and then I can still activate Eladamri. And maybe there will be an expensive creature on top. Alright, that counts. So yeah, the importance of sequencing. So we already have a significant threat on the battlefield. Fauna Shaman can maybe find more. And a Bandit's Hall, just another ramp artifact here. And a medallion. Fair enough. And Great Henge on top. One of our few non-creature spells. So can maybe shuffle that away if we're looking for more creatures. Just get an untap land. Shepherd we can cast. Another fetch land coming up. Okay, so Medallion into Fauna Shaman. And just attack here for a bunch. Won't quite be lethal, but we're getting close. One's at three. And then Shepard makes our stuff uncounterable, which is also useful in this matchup. But it might need something to bounce our stuff back to hand. Thought Monitor to draw. Probably won't cut it. No mana to take an extra turn. And the opponent uh, is gonna throw in the towel here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Hanadu, you guessed it. Our hand is potentially okay. Cavern on Elf could be pretty good. Just need an, an extra lane so we can maybe save the fetch for Nyssa. Priest of Titania, pretty good too. So we can start with Cavern of Souls naming Elf. And then maybe draw Forest next turn. Alright, so I can play Priest of Titania. And then next turn we could already play our commander, or I could go Nyssa, play a fetch land, and then make two mana. And then still cast Eladamri, so we've got a few ways we can sequence. Could also just play Eladamri, and then I guess this also counts the opponent's elf, so then Priest will tap for three to still play Nyssa. I think I still want to trigger Landfall twice this turn if I can help it. So we'll go Nyssa. And then I could get the uh, tapped gate. Since the card I get will most likely cost more than one mana. Alright, got the Lanor Elves, so had I gotten an untapped lane I still would have been able to play Lanor Elves. But that's fine. Although now our opponent with the Nantuko, that's one of the better combos with Nadu. And the Roaring Earth can also be a nice way to keep targeting stuff. And uh, wow, Amphibian Downpour, that's brutal. Shutting down Eladamri and Priest of Titania. So can no longer use the ability now. Still have Nyssa, which can generate some mana for us, but not enough to play this Smuggler's Surprise. 
So yeah, that was pretty backbreaking. Just play a land and uh, play some mana dorks, I guess. Can go Loom Speaker, Lenor Elves, and Fanatic. And hopefully next turn we can deploy something more exciting. In the meantime, can send in everyone. If Priest trades for Insects, that's probably fine, since then they have fewer things they can uh, potentially equip or enchant. And then four, five, six, seven mana next turn. So that could be enough for a smuggler surprise with the more important spree. Now a spell bomb could slow us down. Opponent's just gonna cycle it. Maybe looking for a land drop to enable Roaring Earth. And does not seem like they found one. Okay, so Still on the Smuggler's Surprise plan, I guess. Opponent doesn't have blue mana to counter it. And then putting in Galta puts in Circle of Dreams as well. And won't have the mana to really do anything else. So no point in attacking, unless I guess El Adamri is fine if it dies, because then I can start casting creatures off the top again. And now we get a treasure. Next turn I'll probably activate the gate. Opponent's got the 6 mana of Orinclex, giving them more counters with Roaring Earth as well. And World Spine Worm we can cast thanks to Circle of Dreams pretty easily. Uh, let's see. Alright, I guess that's good enough for a concession. But yeah, casting the World Spine would have been fun. Otherwise we can also maybe look into activating the gate. And with an attack we can generate more treasures, so we'll likely be able to do both. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Sadistic Pilgrim. Our hand's a little on the expensive side. No cheap creatures to enable El Adamre, so I think we can do better. Can also expect a black-white deck to have quite a bit of removal. This is better. One or else to speed things up, turn to El Adamre. And then it may still get removed, but at least we'll get the ball rolling. Our opponent's going to be some sort of life gain deck. And now Halfling's not bad either. So that could allow us to play turn to Aladamri and then turn three activate, putting in one of our curve toppers. For now, just a Jadar. And yeah, we'll stick to the plan. A Vorinclex coming up. Our opponent doesn't know about that one. Just plays Pilgrim. So they're gonna be in for a surprise. Scorpion's acceptable. And may as well block. Alrighty. So at the very least, play Lenor Elves. And then, yeah, Corsair is not going to work. Need to go with Lenor Elves. Put in Vorinclex. And then this will still be tapped, so we'll play the gate. So can't do anything else for the turn. But at least Vorinclex will tax the opponent's mana. If they don't remove it, then next turn we get to empty out our hand. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Okay, we found the mirror match here. And we've got a promising hand with Mystic setting up turn 2 Aladamri. Haywire Might, another cheap enabler. And opponent's off to a very similar start. And then can put in a Great Worm, which is not the best payoff necessarily. I think we still El Adamri over Circle of Dreams. So next turn I can already put in the Great Worm. Although Circle of Dreams would help me play Smuggler Surprise with Spree a little bit sooner. Maybe that's more important. Either way, I can name Elf. Elf. 
tactician, so more elves and the fanatic. Ooh, crater hoof. So that's going to be the finisher next turn. And then for now, can play Ladamri. Fanatic as well. And uh, can play the Might first. So this makes four mana. Although not super relevant here. Okay, pass it back. And then next turn, don't know if Craterhoof is already going to be enough. Opponent casting an Ulamog. That's pretty effective. 18 18. Palaka Worm the draw. So if this attacks, my board is gone. So I have to pretty much win right now. If I Smuggler Surprise with Spree, I can put in more stuff probably than just activating El Adamri. So let's give that a shot. We'll need to tap this. So 9 mana. Can Spree milling additional cards as well. Or I can just cast Fauna Shaman to increase my creature count. And then Spree just putting in two creatures, which would be, I guess, Palaka Worm and Crater Hoof. Yeah, that seems fine. Silverback Elder doesn't do enough. I guess what I could also consider is putting in Palaka and Great Worm, and then activates Eladamri to put in Crater Hoof, tapping two of my summoning sick creatures. That's reasonable, but then I have one fewer attacker. Points at 25, they have two blockers. I think I just go for Crater Hoof and Great Worm. And then Smash. Opponent can eat one of my creatures. And then they should still die. Okay, well, the Hella Dumri Mirror is certainly exciting. Seeing some other curve toppers here. And the Eldrazi are great if you can cast them. Not quite as effective if you cheat them in play with El Adamri, because then you lose out on the cast trigger, which won't happen. So that's why I did not include any of the Eldrazi in my list. But uh, yeah, if you can just ramp into them, they're certainly still very powerful. So yeah, all in all, this deck seems incredibly strong and might have flown under the radar just because Nadu and cards like Tamio, Ajani are maybe making a bigger splash. But this mono green deck is very straightforward to put together. Also a lot more budget friendly than the two color decks as the mana base is mostly basic lanes. And then you get to play with some of the more fun curve toppers in green while still having a very powerful commander that can cheat some of those into play. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.